one of our core approaches to the internal design of this game was that we wanted as much of the game's data, both persistent and specific to the player's playthrough, to be managed in both a centralized way and to be as accessible as possible by any parts of the game that need it. This structure gives us a significant amount of flexibility as any changes to the central data automatically permeates throughout the rest of the game. To achieve this, we use scriptable objects to store persistent data and abstract wrapper classes to hold data that we wanted to serialize when the game is being saved. We also utilized a number of persistent manager objects, which are what keep the current playthrough information in memory, making it easily accessible. Any of our various peripheral scripts that need to reference any aspect of the player's progress can do so at runtime through these managers. This structure of managing data is highly modular. We could continue to add additional manager or peripheral classes, and they would each only access what they need when they need it and with minimal manual configuration. What I did during this project was create many different kinds of models. Um, these models were applied to various different levels, the intro level, the cave level, um, the last level, and all these levels had different styles. So it was fun to experiment with the different processes required to model for these different styles. Um, another area I worked on was creating the character models. Um, this includes the custom rig and the animations for all of them. Uh, we made all the models based off the same base model so we could apply the same rig to all to expedite some of the pro animating processes. Um, these were all things I am relatively new at, so it was really awesome to be able to sit down and learn new things. I worked on the tutorial level for the Tower of Babel game. Uh, the tutorial level is supposed to be this rundown on the village on the verge of abandonment with the population of one or two people. And the only people that visit the town are those that are looking to ascend the Tower of Babel. Um, so what I primarily did in this uh, level is I did the majority of the buildings. I also made the tower itself. So another thing that I was in charge of is the conception of the characters, primarily their names, some of their movesets, and their backstories. Um, there are other two characters that we were playing have, but never really got around the time to getting them in the game. But so far we have Mia and Marco. Mia is a warrior martial artist that primarily uses her fist to fight, and Marco is a healer, priest, or wizard. For Tower of Babel, I work on level design and the user interface. I was in charge of the K level, which was the first level right after the tutorial. For this level, one of my main goals was to create some kind of hostile environment. This game represents the start of the journey for those travelers that dare to enter the tower. I wanted to represent a little bit of hope, even though the overall feeling of the level was dark and foggy, which is why this, I decided to add a little bit of vegetation that aligns with the hole that you can see when looking up in the starting area of the level. The main goal of the player is to go up the tower, which can only be done by fighting the Spider Queen, far more deep within the level. However, the player will need to complete different quests and try to level up their character to be able to fight the Spider Queen and kill it successfully. I work on some of the particle effects from level, including the three different types of flames. Towards the end, I work on some of the UI elements where I did some wireframes and designed some areas of it. Lastly, I was in charge of the icon design for the game that you can see throughout combat, character management tabs, and others. I worked as a level designer and environment artist for Tower of Babel. As a level designer, I worked on creating the second level. The first thing I focused on was wanting to make the player's main goal visible from the start. In the distance, the player can see a giant platform in the sky, which ends up being the final level, Eden. The level offers a linear path with two points of interest, the lake and the village. The narrative constructed with the level is that brigands took over the village found deeper within the valley, and they can be found in multiple locations throughout the player's path. The brigands found the village after teleporting to the forest through a portal, and soon after they ambushed the citizens and took over the village at nightfall. In order to proceed to the next level, the player must prove himself worthy to a wizard found within the level that will make the stairs rise with his magical abilities. 
For the environmental art, I created most of the assets for my level, some of the assets in the tutorial, first and final level. I also created the particle effects when the player teleports, the player and the enemy select circle for when it's their turn during combat, and the dynamic cloud effects for the second level. So for this project, uh, I was the one who came up with the concept of climbing a tower uh, in order to reach a goal. I was sort of interested in creating a game that was based on a real place. So I thought of Tower of Babel and sort of implemented some of the story within it. For example, um, climbing the tower in order to speak to God and God being angered at humanity for doing so. Uh, apart from story-wise aspects of this project, I also spent most of my time modeling during the first semester. But during the second semester, most of, my, most of my time was spent designing my own level, which was the last part of the tower, uh, which is Eden. Eden was meant to be a peaceful sort of island that the player would need to climb up to. I populated it with bright colors, uh, flowers, trees, 